Chuck Bartowski. Hi, my name is what? My name is who? My name is Chuck Bartowski. In the world of global espionage, well, there's like Chuck. Chuck. Hey. There's only one name that matters. Hi, my name is what? See? There, simple. The brand new series of Chuck. Tuesday at 9, only on Virgin One. Stop it! Stop it now! Hello! Doctor. Master. New to watch. Doctor Who Series 3 starts Saturday at 8. See it, love it, share it. something we haven't had in a while. Something different, something that'll really hit the spot. Yeah. What do you think of this? Ah! 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 You like it? Mush! <laughs> it's showtime. Damn, that hit the spot. Great films at nine. Every Friday from the 17th of July, only on Bravo. £130 million. Pounds. That's the whopping sum paid out so far to the British people who played on Challenge Jackpot. It's time for you to get in on the action. Just visit our website at challengejackpot.com. Registering is quick and easy, and thousands of you have already done it. To get you started, for every pound you deposit, we'll give you another pound to play with, all the way up to 200 £130 million pounds has been paid out to date. How much will you win? came from the four corners of the earth, the mightiest gladiators from Great Britain, Australia, the USA, Germany, South Africa, and Russia. Together they united to accept the challenge of the international champion contenders in a battle that will decide who is the best in the world. contenders have already faced our international team of gladiators in what has turned out to be some of the most exciting heats we have ever seen here on gladiators let me just remind you what's at stake here tonight the champions will each receive a round the world trip for two 
and of course, we don't forget our runners up because they will each walk away with £2,000. But before they become champions, they obviously have to make it through the semi finals. So without further ado, let's meet tonight's contenders. First, the women from Great Britain, Janet Allen, and from the USA, Peggy Odita. You must be on a real high, first of all, to become British champion and then to come through to the semi-finals of the international competition. Yes, I am on a high. Um, I'm still trying to take everything in at the moment, um, but i still got to be focused and um, just enjoy myself. Now, how do, do you feel that the international competition differs from our domestics? <clears throat> well, the contenders are a lot tougher um, and the gladiators um, are a lot tougher as well, so it's an all-round tougher game, basically. <laughs> a greater challenge, and the big question is, of course, do you think you've got what it takes? Well, I hope it has. Um, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. Well, the very best of luck. Janet Allen! Peggy, you have been already in your young career uh, a variety of different athletic events. From an adrenaline standpoint, where does performing in the semi-finals here on International Gladiators rank? It ranks right up there with competing in, in track and field. I mean, in track and field, you're running against competitors and you're trying to beat everyone, but here, people are chasing you <laughs> and they're pummeling you. <laughs> so there is that fear factor. You, you've come from California about 5,000 miles away, but the national indoor arena, not exactly foreign soil because the reception you've received so far has been incredible and I, I imagine you're pretty pleased about that. I am definitely. The crowd is so great. I mean, they keep you going. Even though I'm, the, uh, I'm not from the UK, they're still cheering for me and that's great. Okay, Peggy, best of luck. Peggy Odita of the USA. So now we've met our female semi-finalists. Let's meet the gladiators they'll be facing tonight. From the United States of America, it's ICE from Australia, Fury and Wade. From South Africa, Sahara and Delilah. From Germany, Power. From Russia, Lynx and Astra. And from the United Kingdom, Lineup time now to meet our mighty men. Let's introduce today's male contenders from the United Kingdom, Sean Clay, and from Australia, Andrew Halliday. Welcome back, Andrew. Um, tell us, what's the atmosphere like backstage? Uh, everybody's pretty nervous back there, pacing back and forth. Um, but I, I, I tell you what, it, it really helps the nerves when the crowd gets behind you and, and spurs you along. I tell you, it's, it's excellent. Are you feeling nervous? Are you feeling confident to have gotten to this stage and possibly with the final insight? Well, I, um, the heat was a lot more difficult um, in terms of nerves to deal with, so I think uh, at this stage I'm, I'm a little bit better prepared. And what about your motivation at this stage? What motivates you? Well, I, I'm, I'm here to do it for my country um, and myself, of course. There's a lot of guys I've come up across with and um, I've beat them to get on the Australian side, so that's what I'm here for. Well, listen, the very best of luck. Andrew Halliday. Less than 24 hours ago, we found out that 1995 British champion Mark Everett would be unable to compete tonight because of a virus, some kind of flu. About six, seven hours ago, Sean Clay found out that he was the man who was going to replace Mark. How did it all happen? Uh... I don't know, I've not, worked, I've not worked that one out yet. I just can't believe that this has happened. Um, I've not had much time to prepare, but the heart's there and the head's there and I'll give it the best. You do, as we understand it, have turned in the second fastest time in the Eliminator during the British domestic shows, so that's got to speak volumes about your athletic ability, I would imagine. Yeah, well, uh, I think that's probably the thing that had the bearing on getting me back in here, so uh, I just give it my best. Your wife and two children are in attendance. That's got to be special as well. Yeah, they mean a lot to me. They're sat over there. I'll be doing all this for them. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Sean Clay from Great Britain. So now we've met the male semi-finalists. Let's meet the male gladiators they'll be facing tonight. From the United States of America, Hawk and Saber. So you've got our cast of 
characters, our starting lineups. Let the semifinals begin. Sky Trap. Turn your attention skyward. We are set for our first event. On the outside lane, representing the United Kingdom, 1995 British champion Janet Allen. Yeah. On the inside track, from the USA, American champion Peggy Odita. Yeah. For the Gladiators, chasing Janet will be Lynx. Yeah. And going up against Peggy will be Sahara. Yeah. Over the international referee, John Forsyth. Great Britain and USA, ready! Yeah. Ready, Nicholas, ready! Yeah. Three, two, They're revved one. up and ready to go. And straight into the lead, steams Peggy Odita from the US of A. First across the line, 10 points, and second gets five. South Africa's Sahara chasing Peggy. Janet Allen, the UK's champion, trailing and being chased by the Russian Lynx. Peggy slowing down, using just her hands, and Janet hits the front. Peggy fighting back. Oh, and Lynx, the Lynx closes in. She zaps Janet just on the final bend. Ten points to Peggy. Good, exciting opener for this international semi-final. And Janet very unfortunate with a few yards to go. The Lynx strikes her out and denies her the points. So after one event in the ladies' competition, Janet from the UK yet to score. Peggy from the USA, 10. Our men are ready to fly in upside-down fashion in the outside lane. Representing Australia, Andrew Halliday. In the inside lane, from the United Kingdom, Sean Clay. For the Gladiators, chasing Andrew will be Flash from Germany, and pursuing Sean will be Sabre of the USA. Over to international referee, Larry Thompson. Australia and Great Britain, ready! International Grand Prix, Sean Clay from the UK hits the front, Andrew's girlfriend Annie screaming the Aussie onwards. And Sean slowing down, oh, and Sabre cuts him down. Well, now it's all about Andrew Halliday from Australia, more used to being down under than up and under. Scored 10 in his last international sky track, and looking good for the maximum again. No sign of flash, not exactly living up to his name. Andrew from Australia takes the chequered flag and the 10 points, good run. Sean was slow going into the bend, and Sabre had a tiger in his tank and pounce. After one event of the men, Sean from the UK still to score. Andrew, Australia, 10. Next. Standing at the foot of the wall and representing the UK, it's Janet Allen. She's going to be chased by Ice. Also getting ready to climb, it's Peggy Odita of the US. And she's going to be chased by Fury. Yeah. Over to our international referee, John Forsyth. Great Britain and the USA, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second. Three, two, one. Peggy Odita in yellow, Janet Allen in the pink, and both girls looking confident. They both scored 10 in previous climbs against the same gladiators. Ice from the USA chasing Janet, and Fury from Australia on Peggy. And Ice is closing on Janet, and Peggy struggling for a foothold. Janet's brother Elk in there with her mum, Faye. Both gladiators looking to avenge their humiliation last time. Fury almost on Peggy, but Peggy climbing strongly, and Ice has got Janet. Oh, and the Ice slips on the contender. Janet going up for Jimmy, but it's Peggy Odita first up for 10. Janet second for five. Mike's up there. Peggy Odita, you were up first, and I know you knew how good Janet Allen was coming in. I did. I'd watched her in some earlier rounds, and she was a lightning up the wall. I'm surprised I beat her. Janet, you went against Ice again, and that was a rematch. And Ice said, quite frankly, after the preliminary heat, 
she was sorry that she would talk and trash to you, that she said she was going to pull you down. Did she say anything prior to that race? She didn't cite me at too, too, too much this time. She still said she was going to get me, but um, the right side of the wall is a bit weak for me. It's a weak, my weakest bit, so uh, I'm still glad I made it at the top. As good a race in the wall as we've ever seen here at the National Indoor Arena, Peggy gets 10 points, Janet gets five. Well done, both of you. Janet Allen and Peggy Odita. Woo! I'm standing in between two rather angry gladiators. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm, I'm not so much angry uh, as a little annoyed, but um, I did say to Peggy that I was going to get her and I was after blood, so well done. She really did get up there very fast. You obviously scared her and I very disappointing. Um, you know, I actually I got a little over anxious and I had her foot and that's what makes me so annoyed more than anything because I had her foot in my hand and instead of taking my time and grabbing her ankle I just got over anxious and then I broke my nail. Uh oh. <laughs> so close and yet so far. Let's hear it for Ice and Fury. So while Fury takes Ice off for a manicure, the scores Janet from the UK 5, Peggy from the USA 20. Here's Hawk. Hawk is a sexy babe. Oh. I love it here. While Hawk ingratiates himself with the home crowd, here's what Sean Clay had to say about the honour of representing his country. In the domestic series, I got knocked out in the first round, unfortunately. Uh, now I'm back as a standby for the internationals. I think, given the chance to have a second go, I'd be like an animal. I'd go down the eliminator, I'd get it done, then I'd go down the second time, maybe I'll three or four times. Sean, our standby by virtue of his speed on the eliminator. So Thompson. I can fly, he can climb, I even do windows. Australia and Great Britain, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiator, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Andrew from Australia in green, a climbing specialist, but yet to score on the wall in international competition. The UK short plays in blue, and Andrew marginally ahead. And here come the gladiators, Hawk and Andrew. Well, take the time, Hawk. Hawk alleges he can fly, but looks a bit of a dodo at the moment. The giant can smell the blood of an Englishman, but FIFO fumble from the giant. Oh, he slipped, and Andrew's up and over for 10 superb points. The Australian delegation celebrate another victory. Sean's beaten the six-foot giant. Can he beat the clock? Yes, Sean Clay gets his five. Congratulations. You know, you never give the gladiators a chance in this. Hawk's a pretty decent climber. You were already three quarters of the way up after the seven second head start was over. Well, that, that's even extra incentive. If he's fast, you're gonna be like that much faster and, and he wants it just as much as you, so I wanted it. Partner, you're off to a great start. Two events, 20 points. Way to go, Andrew Halliday of Australia. But he wasn't the only guy who made it up. Sean Clay of Great Britain. And this has got to be a great achievement for you, considering that you received a last-minute notice that you had to compete for your countryman, Mark Everett. Yeah, I can't believe the opportunity I've been given. Mark, what a, a fantastic champion. I'm sorry he's out, but I'll give him the best for you, Mark. Sean Clay from Great Britain, Andrew Halliday from Australia. Well done, gentlemen, well done. performance you lost your grip three quarters of the way up yeah, it was it was nearly close but there's only one chance you got him or you don't get him so yeah. it's all or nothing and I tried to and he was a little bit quicker he certainly was and what about you I saw you psyching Andrew up before you went up you're all mouth and no action what do you mean all mouth and no action don't you find these guys out for us that guy was up the wall before I even started. I don't want to hear your lip, woman. You get up the wall. You think you can do any better? I want to see you climb that darn thing. Um, I won't be climbing up the wall today, but um, maybe at a later occasion. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to go spend some time with the crowd. They seem to like me. Yeah. And the Hawk can certainly talk. And the Birmingham crowd love him. After two incredible events, Sean from the UK has five, while Australia's Andrew has 20. So it's two events down, three to go, plus the eliminator.
Gladiator. Join us for more semi-final action after the break here on International Gladiators. Welcome to New York City, guys. It's tougher. I need you to perform to my camera. Sweeter. I'm a 21-year-old virgin. That's weird. And more bitter than before. She could blow the runway just to make me look bad. You have this you attitude. You're a tasteless Kate Moss. This time with Tyson Beckford as mentor. Step it up. Even he's got competition. Wow. Well, do I know how to make an entrance or what? A brand new series of Make Me a Supermodel US. Next Monday at 8, exclusive to Living. It's all about being in the right place at the right time. We've got everything cross style. Getting into winner's row. Come on! And staying out of the red. Large, I am so sorry. Where winning the big money jackpot will take a little bit of luck, but a whole lot of skill. Then the only question left to answer is what you'll do with all that money. I want a boot job. Join Del Winton for the Smash It Quiz Show in it to win it. Weeknights at nine, new to challenge. may not have been built in a day, but these guys could have decorated it in 60 minutes. This is our biggest challenge yet. One team, yes! one house, oh. one hour. Come on, guys, we need more eggs. Thank you here. Can Claire Sweeney and her team beat the clock? I love this room. It's gorgeous. 60-minute makeover, weekdays at 3, new to challenge. From the land of the rising sun, Two great warrior traditions are about to collide. Challenge brings you Ninja Warrior and Unbeatable Banzuki. So follow your favorite competitors as they battle to conquer both tournaments. Ninja Warrior and Unbeatable Banzuki, weeknights at 5 on Challenge. of this International Gladiators semi-final. <laughs> Our first female contender to run the gauntlet is Janet from the UK. <laughs> and she'll be facing our team of gladiators, Ice. <laughs> Astra. <laughs> Flame. Great Britain, ready! Janet Allen from Bristol, England. British women's gladiator champion for 1995 stands 5'4", weighs just over 9 stone, up against 57 stones of gladiators. Janet into the gauntlet against Ice. Ice gives her a cool reception. Ice determined to exact her vengeance for that humbling defeat on the wall. Janet down but not out, tries to shimmy along the wall, past the cold American, along past Astra, keeping herself along the wall as if she was lost in the dark. The Australian Flames next, incredible technique from the UK's contender using the wall to pull herself along. Oh, into the pads of the German power. Oh, Janet's down and her helmet's off. But it looks like she'll be saved by the whistle as John Forsyth blows time. Janet looks hurt. Could be that elbow. Mum Faye hoping it's not serious. And Janet looks in great pain as they ease that protective elbow pad off. Physio Mike Garmston examining the injury. Janet's brother Elkin there concerned. Janet embarrassed the first three international gladiators in the gauntlet by dragging herself along the wall, but in the closing seconds, Power put the brakes on and Janet took the knock. Janet's on her feet now, thank goodness, and the Allen family are on theirs too. Janet, the crowd are really behind you there. You're a very, very brave contender. How's your elbow? Um, 
it's very sore at the moment, and the girls are very tough, and uh, I'm only little, so they've made mince meat out of me. <laughs> well, I know you were very nervous backstage before Gauntlet, and you had every reason to be. It was pretty tough, wasn't it? That's right, very tough. So I think you should go off now and see the medic and make sure that you're okay to play the next game because you, we want you in it. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's hear it for Janet. <laughs> Our next female contender to run the gauntlet is Peggy from the USA. <laughs> and she'll be facing our team of gladiators, Lightning. Peggy's looking forward to this. Here's what she told me earlier. In my game of Gauntlet, I was lucky to have a competitor who had, didn't have too much experience. I managed to um, get through the Gauntlet in, I think it was 10 seconds. Uh, the Gauntlet they have here is a lot wider. You have a lot more room to run around and kind of parade past the Gladiators, which, which was great for me. I, I mean, I loved it. I had a really great time. USA, ready! Peggy's hey. six inches taller and 30 pounds heavier than Janet. Steams in. Oh, strikes the lightning out. Astra next. Oh, nothing cavalier from the Astra. Into Flames Ramrod. The Flames scorching Peggy there. Tries to hold her. Not for long. Power next. Peggy switches her off with ease. Sahara, no, the Americans through 13 seconds. She did it before, now she's done it again. Kimberly's there. Peggy, you are just incredible. That was phenomenal. Oh, that was a bit harder. Was it harder than the last heat? Definitely. I'm sure they were ready this time. Well, it didn't look like they were ready for you because you just powered on through them. I don't know how. I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> now tell me, which gladiator was the toughest? I lost count. I was going through and I was like, is it three or four or five? Well, you were going so fast we almost didn't see you. Now, Andrew, what was her time? 13 seconds. 13 seconds. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I am. Well, you certainly should be. Let's hear it for Peggy from the USA. After that blistering event, Janet from the UK stays on five while the USA's Peggy scores another maximum, taking her up to 30. Our first male contender to run the gauntlet from the UK is Sean. And he'll be facing the wall of gladiators Hawk, <laughs> Vulcan, <laughs> Flash, <laughs> Impy, <laughs> and Titan. <laughs> Over to our international referee, Larry Thompson. Sean Clay from Wakefield, England, in the motor trade. He's six foot fourteen stone, and he'll need to motor to get through this gauntlet. I hope he hasn't Three, trodden on something. Two, one. Four. First in the pecking order, Sean steams into the American and gives him the bird. Oh, the Australian Vulcan next stings in with those power pads. Sean grinds to a halt. Oh, the Vulcan alert, his ears are up, and he's pushing and parrying the Englishman. The ref getting in the way there. Sean needs to get rid of this guy. Come on. Oh, slips in nicely. Hammers into the German. Flash, Flash trying to clean him, but Sean makes him look like a flash in the pan. Flash and Sean crash into Impy, the South African in. Can't hold him. Next is Titan, but he's through. Sean plays superb gauntlet run for the UK's contender. Oh, and Vulcan getting stuck in for some afters, and Sean's wife, Jane, looks worried, and you can't blame her, her husband being attacked by a Vulcan. Twenty-nine point six four inside. Five points. I know you're disappointed, but still in all, I wasn't sure if you get through. They were a pretty hard bunch of gladiators. Yeah, very good men. I gave it my best. Except for Vulcan. He's not so bad. <laughs> Got a nice hairdo anyway, haven't he? Okay, well, five points to you. Let's hear it for Sean from the UK. The crowd pleased with five, and the ref not Just pleased with time. Vulcan. warning to you that this game is played with sticks and with pads. It is not played with cheap talk and pushing. Well, that's put the Vulcan in an ugly mood. Sean, 
you're a fine competitor, but make sure that you do not get involved in that sort of thing. So in addition, a yellow card warning for you, no pushing, no cheap talking. Well, maybe a little harsh on the contender, but Sean shouldn't have mixed it. Clearly the gladiator more vulgar than Vulcan, Jane giving him a piece of her mind. Andrew from Melbourne, Australia, owns a personal training business, stands nearly six foot and weighs in at over 13 stones. Andrew comes wading into the gauntlet. The American Sabre can't hold him. Oh, the Wolf is next, pushes the power pads away with the ridge and the German flag is next. Tries to go through Flash's legs, very unpleasant. Andrew lost his helmet in there somewhere. The referee admonishing Flash for holding. South Africa's Samson next. Samson roughing him up, slamming him about. And Dynamite giving him some stick with that ramrod. But the Russian gladiator defuse and Andrew is through. Unofficially just outside for 20 seconds, but a great gauntlet from the Wizard of Oz. His girlfriend Annie hails her hero. Kimbo's in there too. I think I was more nervous than you were, Andrew. Oh, the crowd was with me. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Andrew, did he get the 10 points? What was the time? 20.63. Five points. Oh, five points. You were so close. Oh, uh, yeah, well, it was fun. Oh, who's worse to face? Is it Vulcan or Wolf? Oh. <laughs> I have to say Wolf. <laughs> yeah, you better say Wolf just to be on the safe side. Well done, Andrew. Five points to you. It's a great start. Well done. Thanks a lot. Ladies Woo! and gentlemen, Thanks let's hear it for Andrew. Woo! Andrew, please. So's Annie, but referee Larry Thompson has an announcement. In the last outlet match, we had an undue holding foul against the Gladiator Flash. The final time was 20.6, and that holding led to the fact that the contender did not get out of the tube in under 20 seconds. I, therefore, am awarding an additional five points, ten points overall, for the Australian contender. Well, that decision, a crowd pleaser. Every time we get the guy, the referee says, let go, let go. What is it, pansies here or something? Well, it takes one to know, Ron Wolfie. Nice makeup. After three events, Sean battles his way to 10, and Andrew Storms ever onwards with 30. Next. A bittersweet moment for Jackie Kinsella. Bitter because she has to replace a good friend of hers and teammates, Janet Allen. Sweet because she gets to compete here on International Gladiators. I know this is a tough at the last minute to be able to have to come in here and try to do well against the Gladiators. Yeah, under the circumstances, I feel really sorry for Janet. But I'd just like to say to all the crowd, I'll do my best, because it's not about me anymore, it's about both of us. I'll do my best, give it my best shot. We know you will. <laughs> sorry to interrupt your focus. Go for it, have fun, and swing shot. Thanks very much. We're set to go. Jackie Kinsella from the UK, filling in for Janet Allen. Mike climbs off Jackie's tower, and Janet Allen's family give her a big hand of encouragement. Contenders are hooked in their harnesses. From Great Britain, Jackie Kinsella. And from the USA, Peggy Odita. For the Gladiators, Fury. She'll swing against Jackie. And Astra, who'll take on Peggy. Over to international referee, John Forsythe. UK and USA, ready! Ready, Anton! Ready! Three, two, one! So, swing out, sisters. Jackie Kinsella, the UK substitute, first to the cylinder, takes a yellow, and Peggy grabs a red. Jackie Kinsella, an air stewardess from Cavisham, England. Peggy Odita, a heptathlete from San Francisco, California. Peggy with a face full of blues, one for a yellow, two for a blue, and three for a red. Peggy scores well, Jackie baskets a yellow, Peggy again, she's up, snatches a blue, makes it look easy. And the gladiators conspicuous by their absence. Jackie, a high flyer by profession, just out of range. Peggy with another free swing, unlucky. 
Gladiators are taking a holiday in this event. Jackie again. Picks a yellow. Easily beats Fury. Peggy up. Another couple of blues for the collection. Recoils beautifully. Oh no, not again, says Astra. Peggy setting a standard for female swingers to achieve. Bags another blue and Jackie with another yellow. Time running down. Jackie will beat her to the swing. Oh, goes high, but comes away empty-handed. So does Peggy. Jackie fires up for another swing. The time is up. Well, that's the best swing shot I've seen in the ladies' competition. And we knew Peggy Odita meant business when, with her first swing, she snatched a top-scoring red. Back to Mike. Here are the results from women's swing shot. Jackie Kinsella of Great Britain, three. And according to John Scotty Anderson, this is a new record for females. Peggy Odita of the USA, 15. Yes, Peggy jumps away into the record books, and after four events, Jackie from the UK has eight, but Peggy from the USA, a massive 45. We've been given the thumbs up sign. Time to go. From Great Britain on the Fire Tower, Sean Clay. And from Australia on the Near Tower, Andrew Halliday. They'll be swinging against the American Gladiator Hawk. German Gladiator Flash. Over to referee Larry Thompson. Great Britain and Australia, are you ready? 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 Three, two, one. Andrew, with that dummy jump of his, swings out. Oh, Sean's empty handed, but the Australian plucks a couple of lemons, baskets his fruit. Sean again. Oh, loses the blue and returns with nothing to show for it. Andrew and Flash. Andrew with a fistful of colours, yellows and blues. And if Andrew keeps up this excellent work, we could be on our way to another record. Here he comes again. Easily beats the Flash, snatches a couple of blues, slams it home, recoils for more. And Sean not having a happy time in this event. And Andrew out of range. Sean back to the platform, needs to lift his game, pull back some of that lead and avoid the American Hawk. Oh, Sean just short again. And Andrew plucks another blue. What an awesome scoring machine this Australian contender is. Here he comes again. Tries to grab a few. Oh, it's raining reds, but Andrew's got a yellow. In the bank, and look at this fast turnaround. Tries again. There's not much left up there because he's grabbed most of them. Sean again. But time's going to beat him. Well, Flash knows he's been in a battle. And Andrew knows who's won. Here are the results in swing shot. Sean Clay, zero. Andrew Halliday, 15. Well, that high octane, high flying performance from Andrew means that he extends his lead over Sean. 10 points to 45 after four. Next. And first up on duel, it's Jackie from the UK. And she's going to be facing Ling. International referee John Forsyth. Jackie Kinsella, the UK's contender, star of the British domestic competition, stands 5 9 and 10 stones exactly, squaring up against the minx of Lynx, the Russian gladiator, four inches shorter than Jackie but 10 pounds heftier. Let's get to it, and Jackie gets to it, and so does Lynx. This is going to be one of those relentless hammer and tongs battles. Jackie proved herself to be a skilled duelist in the 1995 Domestic Championships. Lynx trying all sorts up there, but Jackie putting together the combinations. Oh, and Lynx steps across. Ten points to Jackie Kinsella. Lynx furious with herself. In the replay, Jackie puts together a series of powerful hooks, rattle Lynx's cage, and entices her across. Jackie's supporters applaud their heroine. Next up, it's Peggy from the United States. And she's going to be facing Sahara. The imposing live figure of the South African gladiator, Sahara, stands a superb 6'2 and weighs 11 stones. Who's going to kick sand in her face? She'll be squaring up to America's Peggy Odita. Peggy stands four inches shorter than Sahara, six pounds heavier. Okay. 
for a rumble for Sahara. This is Operation Desert Storm. It's all about aggression, poise, and balance too. Peggy giving it out, and Sahara giving it back. Oh, she's gone. The Sahara goes down. Another maximum for Peggy Odita, and Sahara sportingly acknowledges the victor. In the replay, Sahara plants a right, Peggy ducks the left, tickles the unbalanced South African behind the ear, and she flies into the wind after five events. Jackie Kinsella of the UK, 18, and the American Peggy Odita blasts her way to an incredible 55. So we now move into the men's event with Sean from the UK. And he's going to be facing Impey. Impey, the South African superstar. Impressive physique, impressive stats, 5'8 and over 14 stones, but four inches shorter than his oh, opponent God. and only 10 pounds heavier. Three, two, Let's get ready to one. rumble. Oh, and short straight to work with an overhead right. It's over before it's begun. Steps across and the Clay family on its feet. Sean bails out. 10 points richer. Great performance. You take no prisoners. Ah! That feels better. Pleased to get that out, you sister. Yep, needed that. <laughs> and you needed ten points. Let's hear it for Sean. Well done. His dad, Tony, and son, Dominic, there. Sean whopped in a superb opener, and exactly as he did last time, the imp gets overexcited and overbalances. Next up, it's Andrew of Australia. <laughs> and he's going to be facing Sabre. The American Sabre used to the cut and thrust of the dueling platform at home, but he's three inches taller than his Australian opponent and over three stones heavier. Hunger! Three, two, one. It's hammer time! Oh, Sabre jabbed Andrew's head back. Andrew looking for the jackpot, scored maximum points in every event so far, but the Sabre looking to cut him down to size. Andrew making life as awkward as possible for Sabre, but the Sabre is fearsome. So dexterous with his pugil stick, swinging it around, overhead and underhand. Oh, he's nailed him! Shoves him in the solar plexus and right out the back door. The Sabre foils the contender, at last the gladiator victory on the duel. Andrew, I have to ask if you're all right. Yeah, yeah sure. No problem. That was one of the most terrific games of duel we've ever seen. I mean, that really was pretty fearsome. Well, you know, I went up there to just save a hard time. <laughs> he gave me a hard time, but I was really up there to get another couple of points. And, uh, you know, he stopped me from that. He certainly did. And you started off with a pretty nasty jab initially. Uh, he set up for defense. He wouldn't let my sledgehammer through. So I had to go with the jab and try to take his heart out. I see. No messing. <laughs> oh, Andrew, but you're feeling all right, aren't you? Yeah, at least he didn't use his saber teeth. <laughs> well, never mind. You put up, he put up a good fight, though, didn't he? Yeah, he put up a real good fight. He started frustrating me. After I saw him set up for defense, I said, well, maybe I'll let him get a hit or two, make him miss an encounter, but he never let the sledgehammer through. Good defense, man. Let's hear it for Sabre and for Andrew. I think he did After five events, the UK's Sean Clay battles the 20, while Andrew Halliday from Australia stays on 45. So but don't forget, of course, at stake is a place in our international final. Join us after the break here on International Gladiators. Welcome to New York City, guys. It's tougher. I need you to perform to my camera. Sweeter. I'm a 21-year-old virgin. That's weird. And more bitter than before. She could blow the runway just to make me look bad. You have this you attitude. You're a tasteless Kate Moss. This time with Tyson Beckford as mentor. Step it up. Even he's got competition. Wow. Well, do I know how to make an entrance or what? A brand new series of Make Me a Supermodel US. Next Monday at 8, exclusive to Living. It's all about being in the right place at the right time. We've got everything cross style. Getting into winner's row. Come on! And staying out of the red. Large, I am so sorry. We're winning the big money jackpot. We'll take a little bit of luck, but a whole lot of skill. Then the only question left to answer is what you'll do with all that money. I want a boob job. Join Dale Winter for the Smash It Quiz Show in it to win it. Weeknights at nine, new to challenge. Good 
morning, sir. Uh, just a few questions. Is your trip for business or pleasure? Pleasure. Lovely. I'm going on holiday. And where will you be staying while you're there? Uh, with my mum and dad. Yeah, no, that Right, that's yeah. lovely. Well, they live out there. Travel insurance. Oh, thanks. Have you got travel insurance? Uh, no. Taking no. a photocopy of your passport. Um, Check to see if you need any vaccinations for where you're going. Oh. Uh, Picked out the laws of the country, the local do's and don'ts. Uh, no, look, why, why do I need to know all of that? You know, I'm staying with my mum and dad. Oh, is your mother A, a qualified local lawyer, B, a top surgeon, C, fabulously wealthy, or D, none of the above? Uh, D. Lovely. Is your father A, the local chief of police, B, the owner of a private plane with its own onboard, fully trained medical staff, C, fabulously wealthy, or D, none of the above? Uh, Deep. Oh, lovely. Final question. Are you actually a superhero and therefore immortal? Um... Thank you, sir. That's lovely. Have a good trip. Check it out before you check in at fco.gov.uk forward slash friends and family. Three, two, one. <laughs> OK, team, the makeover has Started. Rome may not have been built in a day, but these guys could have decorated it in 60 minutes. This is our biggest challenge yet. One team, yes! one house, Come on. one hour. Come on, guys, we need more energy here. Can Claire Sweeney and her team beat the clock? I love this room. It's gorgeous. 60 minute makeover, weekdays at three, new to challenge. From the land of the rising sun, Two great warrior traditions are about to collide. Challenge brings you Ninja Warrior and Unbeatable Banzuki. So follow your favorite competitors as they battle to conquer both tournaments. Ninja Warrior and Unbeatable Banzuki, weeknights at 5 on Challenge. finding out who will go through to our international final. Now, in the women's competition, we have an unprecedented points difference. Jackie's on 18 points, Peggy's on 55 points. That's a 37-point difference, which will give Peggy a huge 18 and a half second head start. Over to our international referee, John Forsythe. USA, you will go on my first whistle. Great Britain, you will go on my second. Peggy Odita Three, from the US of two, A with an all-time record of 55 points sets off for a place in the final of International Gladiators. The head start will be 18 and a half seconds, but for Jackie Kinsella of the United Kingdom, it'll seem like an eternity. Onto the rope, and Peggy over a stone heavier than Jackie, so she can't afford to be complacent over this eliminated course, which favours the lighter contenders. Onto the hand ladder, and here comes Jackie, an air stewardess from Caversham. High and low hurdles, moving well. Peggy across the rollers and races to the net. Jackie onto the rope, very fast. And the home crowd really getting behind the British brunettes. Peggy climbs to the top of the net. She knows Jackie is closing down that lead all the time. Jackie sprints across the rollers. She's got to keep going to capitalise on any sort of error from Peggy in the closing stages. Peggy splashes down, the graveyard's next. Jackie climbing well on the net. Peggy onto the balance beam, darts across it. Next, it's the Travelator for a place in the final. Here she comes, America's Peggy Odita. Oh, she's gone! And the British girl is in with a chance now. Suicide splash, the crowd are going crazy. Peggy again on the Travelator, powers the way up. She's there. Oh, it does it again. She slips through her fingers. Incredible stuff. Her fans can't believe it. Jackie on the balance beam. Oh, a terrible fall for Jackie. The drama is hard stopping. Peggy on the Travelator. Can she do it this time? No, she's blown in again. And she's given Jackie a second chance. Here comes Jackie on the beam. Safely across this time. Now for the Travelator. Jackie to put the UK in the grand final. Oh, she's lost it. You've got to dig deep now, suck in that air. Peggy, fourth time. Will it be lucky? No, the legs have gone. The only way she's going is down. It's Jackie now. She's got 8,000 people screaming her on. Oh, she's still not got enough. Go on, girl. The words of encouragement, but it's all about dredging the last drop of iron will and forcing those agonized legs into one final burst of power and glory. The fans can't believe this drama. Here they come again. And this time, Peggy's there. Now she's lost it again. Jackie's digging deep, but she hasn't got enough either. 
Well, we've never seen such a remarkable display of courage from two contenders on Gladiators. They've given their all. Jackie Kinsella and Peggy Adita have given everything for their countries. The American and British viewing millions should be so proud. But still more is demanded of them. Well, they'll get one more chance and then the referee will call a break and give them a sudden death playoff from the beginning of the balance beam. Neither one of these girls wants to do that. Who's going to do it as they both pump up the travel later? It's Peggy Odita from the United States. Hits the top on the rope and swings into the final of International Gladiators. And the Americans are about to fate. Jackie came in as a substitute for Janet Allen. She's honoured her country and waved the Union flag with pride tonight. True British determination and example to us all. A big smile. She's there. Jackie Kinsella's place in the Gladiators Hall of Fame is assured. The 8,000 people in the National Indoor Arena rise to acclaim her. Jackie onto the rope and swing through the burst. Home is the heroine. Peggy, I know deep down inside you are aching. Your legs are shot, your arms are tired. You had an incredible 18 and a half second head start and it almost, almost went away. Oh my God, is that the toughest thing you've ever been in your entire lifetime? Uh, I, I can't even talk. It was really hard. I didn't think I was gonna make it. We're both standing there. I'm like, you you and me. Oh, I guess I just found a little bit more. You know, it was, it was so amazing and, and Uli was down there as well. We were watching your two faces. All of a sudden, you take it over from here, Uli, but uh, Jackie had a chance to win. Well, there was no chance at the beginning at all, I thought. Poor Jackie, she's got 18 and a half seconds to catch up. It was just the most incredible eliminator ever in the history of Gladiators. There's no doubt about it. You must have felt the audience behind you. I mean, they were roaring. They're absolutely fantastic. What was going through your mind when you, you kept seeing Peggy coming down and you were going she was coming down. Until I got to the travel I didn't realise she was there. I thought she'd well won. And when I fell off the beam, I thought, you silly girl. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, you silly girl. I'll tell you what, I think uh, we ought to give them their trophies, Oli. I think so, too. Announce that Peggy's going on to the uh, grand final, the championship round, and let these two old competitors get arm in arm and salute this crowd in Birmingham with a little victory lap. Both of them were winners. In Great Britain, Gladiators has made young people think more about their own health and fitness and want to be like Gladiators. In the other countries that uh, international Gladiators will be seen in, I think it will have exactly the same effect. Gladiators in the UK is like the Olympic Games for the common man, and I feel it will have that effect in any other country it's shown. I really believe that the international Gladiators can serve as a microcosm for the whole world. I think with athletics comes camaraderie, and I think with camaraderie, we can overcome any problem. I think with athletics comes respect, and with respect, we can overcome any problem. So the International Gladiators is actually a microcosm for the entire world. And if you just watch and follow the lead that we've started to set, then we won't have any problems by this time next year. International Gladiators also gives me the chance to come to England, um, where I've never been before. So um, I thank you guys for that. I believe that the best thing about the International Gladiator series that I get to meet women from other countries all over the world. Women that haven't realized how annoying I am yet. God, I love this game. I wouldn't say Hawk was annoying, would you? Don't answer that. Andrew has a 25-point lead, which converts to a 12-and-a-half second head start over Sean. Down to Larry Thompson. Australia, you will go on my first whistle. Great Britain, you will go on my second whistle. Two, one. Australia's Andrew Halliday, 25-year-old personal training instructor from Melbourne, starts his run for a place in the international grand final. Onto the rope. His fastest previous eliminator timed at 54 seconds. Sean Clay waits for the whistle. There it goes. A self-employed motor mechanic from Wakefield given the huge honour of representing his country in international competition. Andrew across the rollers and into the net. Sean on the rope. Andrew fighting like an insect, escaping from a spider's web, hits the top. 
his girlfriend Annie there. Sean on the bike. Next is the rollers. Oh, he slams into the net. Andrew takes a real flyer off the zip. Sean climbing strongly. Andrew on the balance beam, and he sprints across it. Now he's got to get his act together for that final burst. Sean on the zip. And now here comes Andrew Halliday for a place in the international final. Brings it home for Australia. We said in the heat this was a man to watch out for, and he was well worth watching. The Aussie's delirious. Now it's Sean on the beam. Deep breath, hold your head high. And he barnstorms the travelator. Sean Clay, a real credit to the UK. Pride tinged with pain. Sean gave it all for his country. You can't ask for more. You were like a whippet around that eliminator course. Were you aware of Sean behind you at all? Uh, in that particular one, I look over my shoulder a couple of times just to make sure he was still behind me. Well, you could hear the crowds roaring as he started, and then, of course, it looked to me as if you were very relaxed as you headed for the travelator because you stopped and pulled your knee pads up. Uh, yeah, back at home when you play Aussie rules, you always, you know, drop your socks just before you're about to kick the goal. <laughs> you must be delighted. You're through to the final. Woo! That's it for Andrew Halliday. Well done. Here's your trophy. Uh, thanks, crowd. That was excellent. Well, Sean, for a guy who 24 hours ago thought he was going to be watching this from the stands at the National Indoor Arena to actually being in the cauldron of fire, I thought, and I think everybody here in Birmingham, thought you did quite well. Congratulations. Can I do it again? Absolutely. Not, just not now. Give me another go, another go. Uh, I really enjoyed it, that's all I can say. I've done my best. Uh, I enjoyed the power events. Sorry I didn't win for you, folks. Before this thing started and after watching what happened between Peggy Odita and Jackie Kinsella, did you think somehow in the back of your mind, maybe, just maybe, I might have a chance? Yep, certainly did. I thought that something might happen for me, but unfortunately it didn't. Well, you're not going to go on to the championship round, but you have championship family over there who wants to give you a big hug and kiss. Your wife, Jan, Melissa and Dominic, your two children, congratulations. Sean Clay from Great Britain putting on a great display. Terrific display, Sean's dad Tony on the left there, as Sean still has the energy to jog across to greet them. He can wave that flag with honour and pride. His wife Jane there, and his son Dominic. And Andrew acknowledges his Australian supporters. Sometimes as sports presenters we are given to hyperbole, and it's not often that a sporting event lives up to the advanced billing, but in this case, especially the eliminator final between Jackie and Peggy, well, you talk about high drama, Uli, that was something special. Oh, my heart's still beating, and of course, once again, we've learned the lesson that here on Gladiators, we can never say never. And of course, being international presenters, we can't be too biased. All four contenders did so, so well tonight, but I must say, I'm very proud of Andrew the Australian. You certainly had the right stuff. Well, one more semi-final to go. We'll have that next week here from the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham. Until then, for Kimberly Joseph and Uli, I'm Mike Adamley. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week on International Gladiators. Goodbye, everyone. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. of global espionage. Well, there's like Chuck. Yeah, Chuck. Hey. There's only one name that matters. My name is... What? My name is... Who? My name is... Lester. No, Chuck. See? There, simple. The brand new series of Chuck. Tuesday at 9, only on Virgin One. 
concealing Dearden's body is a crime, and that's what you'll be charged with. Can't keep a good criminal down, can you? She thinks we might have a murder. Who does that to somebody? Someone's found a skeleton. Oh, not in that cupboard, I hope. I'm not in the business of saving souls. I want Fraser, and I want him now. Weeknights at 9 on Alibi, Sky 132 and Virgin Media 130. A man walks into a bar and says... My name is... Ishmael. Some years ago... I started calling myself Ginger. Peter. Sherlock. Rosemary. Emmanuel. The real Slim Shady. Rumoured to be the new signing for Westminster and the Thames. And I just loved to ride horses. Anyway, it was about 11 o'clock in the morning. Clouds were gathering across the moor. It was the day my grandmother exploded. Mm, very messy. But when mixed with half a pound of butter, you get the most delightful creamy sauce. Which, when eaten as part of a calorie-controlled diet, means... Nothing could be more becoming to your complexion. Hang on a minute. Let's get back to the main plot. And that man, Rodriguez, who slithered into the bar with a... Man who could cry milk. Two bikini-clad lovelies. Eleven piglets. A boy who never grew up. The world tiddlywink champion. A pair of star-crossed lovers. And the barman says, what's this? A joke. <sighs> Improving your reading can change your life. I want something we haven't had in a while. Something different, something that'll really hit the spot. Yeah. What do you think of this? Ah! 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 You like it? Mush! <laughs> <laughs> it's showtime. Damn, that hit the spot. Great films at nine. Every Friday from the 17th of July, only on Bravo. There's a welcome bonus waiting for you when you register with Challenge Jackpot. Give us a call or visit our website, challengejackpot.com. We'll match your first deposit from £10 up to a whopping £200. Challenge Jackpot, your favourite place to play. The following programme is a paid-for commercial presentation. Introducing Paint Runner on behalf of B&L Media Limited. Painting ceilings and hard-to-get-at places is everybody's nightmare. Filling messy paint trays, up and down ladders all day long, and sooner or later, the inevitable will happen. And worst of all, there's always the messy clean-up afterwards. And if you don't, your brushes and rollers will be useless next time. But there is another way. Introducing Paint Runner, the no mess, no fuss way of painting all the awkward places like ceilings and edges around your home. No mess. Simply fill the Paint Runner's barrel with paint, secure the cap, and away you go. No dipping either, as the paint is contained inside the roller, ready for each smooth application. And best of all, no dripping, as Paint Runner distributes just the right amount of paint you need without flicking paint everywhere. And as for the cleanup, well, it's as easy as turning on a tap. Within a couple of minutes, your Paint Runner is flushed free of paint and ready to roll again. So you won't end up with a collection of un.